I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I'm delighted to welcome back one of my favorite guests. Her name is Janice Holloman. She's the author of a powerful book. It is called I Am a Survivor. It is a memoir that narrates her inspiring journey of faith, hope, and endurance through numerous health challenges, from Crohn disease to heart disease and beyond. Her story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of life-altering illnesses and trials. We're delighted to welcome back this very talented author here to today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Authors Tranquility Press for helping us put her in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like her by subscribing to our channel, by purchasing her wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Janice, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. I love the title of your book, I Am a Survivor, because it kind of says it all in a very powerful statement. And I think that's what you need in order to survive when you're faced with the kind of health challenges you've been faced, a determined attitude, right? Right, right. And it was just amazing how I came up with that title. Mm -hmm. I was thinking basically uh, the company I was with uh, asked me to think of the title mm -hmm. and connected with something famous or something, whatever. And the only thing I thought about, and I love Reba McIntyre's show mm -hmm. and her theme song, I, I'm a Survivor. And gotcha. that really was where it came from. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you borrowed from the song a little bit because it fits mm -hmm. your uh, story perfectly. And like I said, it's a powerful statement and you need to be a powerful person if you're going to deal with what you dealt with. Tell us a little bit at what age was it that you started having problems with your health? Yeah. Well, basically, as far as I know, my mom said I was born with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that, yeah, when I was a teenager, I almost died uh, from a condition. And the doctor told her that if I would have waited, that if she would have waited one more day, that I would not have been here. Mm -hmm. So, but then when I got married and all these things start happening to me mm -hmm. and I was having a lot of problems and going to the doctors and so forth. So that was something that really stood out more and more. It was just constantly, you know, right after I got out of my adulthood. Yeah. 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 It, when you get sick and you're married, it can be a strain on the marriage as well. Tell us a little bit how that went. Was your husband able to be there to counsel you? Was he not supportive? Was he very supportive? Tell us how that went. My husband was very supportive, very supportive. Basically, he was always there doing things for me because I'm. Uh, he spoiled me really and truly. Um, That's great. And yeah, as I said in the book, for 40 years, no, he spoiled me as a factor of that there were things that he did that I did not do, even when he was working and coming home. And basically my mom told him that I didn't know how to cook. <laughs> and That's it was funny. funny. So he was thinking that he had to come home every day and cook. But when he got home, his first dish was a uh, dish that I made up mm -hmm. and that I did. And it was the reason why my mom told her that because she didn't know I could cook because I didn't have to cook because there yeah. were so many of us. And that was that was just it. And he was just shocked. Ooh, that's funny. It's a great story. Your mom told him you didn't know how to cook. Well, it's great to hear he was supportive. I'd imagine having a beautiful dog like that in your life has been helpful too, right? Yes. Yes, he is. Uh -huh. He is very helpful in a yeah. lot of ways with a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Distractions at times. It can keep you yeah. moving. That's for sure. A dog can That's keep true. you moving. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me a little bit about the motivation for writing this memoir. I am a survivor. Well, basically, the motivation was my doctors, mm. and especially my doctor for my Crohn's, my gastrologist. He was the main one that kept after me for years. And my heart doctor was the second one. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, like I said before, I had so many surgeries that I had done on me. And with Crohn's disease, it is any moment that you can have, it could turn into cancer. Mm -hmm. So, and it was like every 
16 to 18 months, I was having surgery for scar tissues removal besides other serious things that was going on with me. Hmm. And they was always, you know, afraid that it was going, that that can happen. But I had to have those surgeries done. Hmm. And, and so that was it, basically. And like I said, you know, he just told me, look, I told you before that you need to write this book. Because mm. with you, there are so many people. You know, like like I have ten uh, patients that have Crohn's disease, and mm-hmm. out of those ten patients, you're the only one that have not turned into Crohn's. And everything that, that you've gone through, then uh, I've been so afraid that this was it. But right. you have, and but you pulled through, and so you have a story to tell. And we know we had a little joke about it. And I know suggest that he will write the book and he like looked at me, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm That's glad funny. that he didn't because uh, he couldn't write what I wrote. He couldn't feel what I feel and tell it like it is. Right. So that, that was it. Yeah. 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 When people open up your book, what will they find between the pages? Tell us a little bit about your story. Well, basically, uh, they will see that I dedicated the book to my husband, my son and my mother. And and that right there. And then they will always see a list of not just the chapters, but also a list of poems that I wrote in the in different chapters that I wrote from my heart that what I was feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what they will see. And basically also that they will see a monologue between me and other people. That was like you and I having a conversation right now. Mm -hmm. They will see that happening. And they will also see the words of nine words that I live by every day. But they are twined together. You can't do one without the other. Mm -hmm. And so I will pull one and work one for one week. And that is what I, that is how I keep going and keep focusing and basically that's that's it and the yeah. book itself is not about any anger or depression which i know that happens and mm-hmm. it is but it was it's about basically with everything that's going on that you could find a silver lining because that's what i did i looked for the silver lining i never said why me why is this happening to me? Because I'm no different from anyone else mm-hmm. as being human, but I am different as anyone else by how I deal with different things. And I choose to see the positive of what I can learn from it. Because I used to wonder, what was my purpose? Mm-hmm. But then when I start writing the book, I realized, wow, this is your purpose, James, mm-hmm. to be able to help someone else. Because through the years, even before, when I would be down, when I would be down with my Crohn's, like it'll knock me down. It could knock me down for months, mm. and I can't move out of the bed. I can't go nowhere or whatever, whatever. And my friends and things they will call to encourage me, but then I will be the one that's talking to them, and they're like, "I called to encourage you, but you <laughs> encouraged me." I'm like, "Really and truly, you did encourage me by me allowing me to be able." to you know do what I did for you. Right. So yeah. So that's that's my main thing that I see for myself. And I look for the positive in bringing a joy or a smile to them. And even some of them yeah. even tell me that I couldn't even go anywhere. Right. Because they would call me. We need you. You know, and I never forget one day I decided, and it's the craziest thing, mm-hmm. I decided to be depressed. Mm-hmm. I'm like why did I do that that day? My phone was ringing off the hook. <laughs> right. That's funny. I told my cousin that I'll decide to be depressed. Girl, you crazy. But someone <laughs> decided they're going to be depressed. And then the other one go like, you can't be depressed. We need you. You have to be what you are. You know that. So That's I'm like, funny. forget it. I can't be depressed today. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> that is fun. how did you though keep from being depressed? You think it's just your wiring to be a happy person? Um, or was it your faith that sustained you that kept you uh optimistic? It's actually it's both. 
Mm. Is both because you, I, I'm really you have to have faith in order to believe in something so strong and to have that uh, courage to keep going no matter what and to decide that whatever is happening to me that I decide that I'm not going to look at the negative part mm -hmm. even though uh, people can look at me as thinking that you are too happy all the time but. Mm -hmm. That is that is something that I decided and I'm like, OK, if you think I'm smiling so much because you said I'm laughing and smiling so much. Yeah. OK, you will never see me do it again. <laughs> and I did that for yeah. two weeks. And after, after those two weeks that, during that time, that was the most miserable time in my life. Yeah. And I decided, no, forget this. And I just say whatever they decide, that's on them. Not me. I have to decide what is right for me. And I decide to be happy mm. no matter what's going on because just because I'm sick or injured or whatever, whatever, uh, I should not look at the negative of it, of letting it control me. Right. You know, even though you know, there are moments, okay, you got to think about it because I never forget when the, my doctor, my colonel doctor, first told me that I had uh, cancer. And I'm mm. like, I'm sitting there and thinking and 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 everything. And he was like, it, you know, it, it's okay. It's okay. And so I'm like, I'm trying to wrap it around my head, you right. know. And that's my first thing. Instead of thinking of being negative, I'm right. wrapping it around my head of how to deal with it. And mm. that's what I do. Yeah. Well, that empowers you. Uh, yeah. because you aren't letting your emotions get in the way of your reasoning. And then, you know, I also think maintaining that positive attitude helps right. in your battle. I mean, I, the messages in your head are very, very powerful. So if you're sending positive messages through your body because you've got a bright outlook on life, you're much more likely to have a great outcome, don't you think? You're right, because the first mm -hmm. thing is, Healing starts with the mind. Yeah. Okay. Because see, if you're going to lay there and be depressed and be angry all the time, it's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. You're just going to be miserable and make everyone else around you miserable. <laughs> but if you decide that, okay, I'm going to deal with this issue in a positive way and not take it out on other people or not let them see or feel that you are so depressed and so down and out and so mm -hmm. forth, then that takes a lot on yourself. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot in basically say, okay, I got courage to do this. I got courage to go through this. I got, I have the courage to be able to deal with this issue and let's see what's going to happen. And you no, know, and, and th that's it. I'm not going to let it control me just because I'm sick, just because I'm down, just because I can't sit up or uh, whatever. And, you know, that's it. Even the time when um, when I was getting about ready to have uh, a surgery to have my uh, large intestine, small intestine and my large part, half of my large intestine removed in that day uh, from my Crohn's disease and the, when the nurse came in to tell me that she wasn't able to, that she had to talk with the doctor and the doctor said he wasn't able to um, give me, let me have the surgery that day um, because I was pregnant. And I'm like, uh, wow. And, I, and I'm like, my son is 21 years old. And I'm just talking to the nurse, another nurse that's in there that she was complaining about her herself, how tired she is because she had two kids, a 22 and a two year old. Wow. <laughs> Laughing at her about that. And then the nurse come in with me. So, but it's just a factor of that. But wind up uh, doing that, I wind up having a miscarriage. Mm. And that was the hardest thing for me, even today. Mm. And for many years, I could not deal with being around babies or whatever, mm. but I didn't take it out. Because yeah. on anyone, I still felt nice and felt good about it. But the thing, I, I now I can deal with it. Yeah, I truly can deal with the issue and not letting it control me. And that's exactly what I do: is work on well, how in the world can I get to the point 
of not letting all this misery have me being miserable. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, because you're just extending the misery then. If if you're dealing with misery and then you're miserable, it's a vicious cycle of grief. And, true. you know, you want to be happy during the moments that you're feeling well, that you're feeling loved, that you're feeling connected, and right. your whole life can't be built around your disease. Um, right. So. Your your son uh, is one of the people you dedicated the book to. I'd imagine yes. it's been tough on him over the years. Mom's been sick a lot, surgeries, doctors. Tell us a little bit about him. Well, my son, uh, basically, uh, we had him after, five, after we was married for five years. Mm -hmm. So this is going on 46 years now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that my son is, uh, he's like a call, an uh, introvert. Mm -hmm. And basically, he and I are basically totally different. <laughs> and so that means that he keep his feelings within himself. And I never forget one day I had him to do an interview on me and had him to, you know, and I asked him some questions mm -hmm. and about it and how did he feel about it. And he told me, he said, Mama, he said, listen, he said, you... I am, it, it's, it's no words that you can say because with everything that you have gone through and the way that you have handled it and you have pulled through it, because they, there are times when they have been announced to me that they have given, the doctors have given up on me hmm. that I, and how I pulled through that. He like, you are the strongest person that I've known and hmm. that I am so amazed with, the things that you have done, even now, um, in my after I decide after I hit, you know, retirement age, and I decide I wind up coming out of retirement. So mm -hmm. he is very comfortable with that. He's proud of me. He's very mm -hmm. proud. Well, he yeah. should be proud of you. You've been through a lot, and you've handled it with a lot of grace and dignity and humor and. Uh, and positivity. So absolutely, he's got a good reason to be proud. Tell us a little bit about what it was like writing this book. Was it difficult? Was it painful? Was it cathartic? I mean, reliving a lot of these, you know, episodes must have been somewhat painful, right? I think the most painful part was the one about the miscarriage. Hmm. Okay, that was the most painful one. As for the rest of them, it was about more of, of enduring, of uh, getting through it mm -hmm. and how I was going to view it. And that is the whole thing. There was like uh, a chapter in there about me where my son came over one morning after my husband did not... Uh, chapter called You Can Hit Me Over the Head with a Hammer. Hmm. And at that point, that chapter was talking about I was so tired and I like my life was going out. And I I just I didn't care what you did to me at that moment because I didn't have the energy to fight back. Hmm. And I was actually I was dying. And my son supposed to have came over that night, but he didn't. But he came over that next morning. And when he did, he wind up, he seeing me with my eyes was orange and so forth. And that was a point that he like, daddy, uh, mama's dying. She's not getting any oxygen. You need to, we need to get her to the ER. And so that was a point right there that, that was hard for anyone and for me to pull through. And I had to sign like, okay, I'm tired. I can't. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not, I'm going to fight, but I decide to let go. Hmm. And I said, let me just take this last breath. This is what I'm thinking now. I'm, and, and, and they could not wake me up. The doctors couldn't, they, that was just it. And I'm like, as I was taking this last breath, then I'm like, Janice, you can fight this. Hmm. You just fought going around your car last year for $21. You hmm. can fight this. And I decided, and I, because I was feeling my life leaving out of me at that moment, mm. then I said, you can fight it, girl, come back. Mm. And so I did, I fought, and I came back. Amazing. And that's exactly what happened, yeah. Yeah, 
the will to live is so important. It is. It is. Because I feel like I'm not just living for myself. I'm living for everyone else that I can touch. And that's what that is my purpose. And that's my goal is basically to touch everyone's heart in a warm way and mm -hmm. hope that they can connect a, a small token of whatever I'm willing to offer. Mm -hmm. And all I just ask people to do is basically have an open heart and an open mind. Mm -hmm. And that would take you a long way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about your health now. Are you doing better? No. Crohn's disease mm -hmm. is a life disease. And basically, it's the little C, which is going to turn into the big C. Mm -hmm. And as for me, it's a hereditary thing. And I have had three cousins that died from it. Mm -hmm. And so with that saying that, and then hereditary on in the same family is breast cancer. Mm. And so that is the issue that I deal with uh, now also. And then I've um, been told that with um, with the car, two car accidents 20 days, 20 days apart, uh, that the doctor found something that he wasn't looking for. And that that was an issue that happened that I deal with every day with that. And even now, uh, focusing with not just with the Crohn's disease, I have a heart disease. Mm. Now I'm dealing with the factor of, of another different type of heart disease because I just found out that my three valves to my heart is not closing up. Mm. So that means that my blood is not pumping in my heart. Mm. It's pumping on the outside. And right. we know that if fluid get behind your heart, that's it. Right. So now I'm trying to focus on getting these valve closed up mm. because I last year was a tough year for me that with my husband getting sick, then my mother dealing with her, her issue, plus being, you know, being a caregiver of the two of them and plus being a caregiver of my brother that's in the nursing home. So that was a lot that I did not focus on myself like I normally do. Mm. But I, like I told them, I would tell them that I love them, that I will die for them. I would die with them, but I'm tall. I cannot mm. die because of them. Mm. And so, yeah, so really a lot of stress and a lot of things are going on yeah. and everything. And so, yeah, that is something that I'm dealing with all those different things. And then with the mo issue, the, the sickness from that, that it had, it, it took a toll on me and the poisoning it did, you know, with my teeth and everything like that, that I had to get them. They was just, it was just horrible. And it, yeah. it is just horrible stuff that I'm dealing with right now. So, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, well, I'm sorry. You're still going that? through this for sure. Yeah. Um, for your heart, what do they prescribe surgery or can they treat you medically or? Well, right now it, they're trying to see if I can get them closed, and that means to basically um, I don't stress out. But mm. no matter how a person may say that they don't stress, but their body right. stress. Sure. Okay? And so, and that is the point, and that's what happened. So, with all that going on, I have come to the realization: okay, tone it down. No stress because I know I every time with my heart, when I, anytime someone, especially when you're dealing with someone with dementia and mm. they go after the caregiver more than anything else, yeah. and you know, and, and all the stuff that you can't do anything right, and they calling you all kinds of names and everything yeah. like that. Okay, really, you 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 handle it but your body take a toll of it. Sure. And when I start feeling that stress in my neck, going down my arm, down to my fingers and my heart hurt, I'm like, okay, stress, stop, let it go. Right. Okay. You can't afford this. And then that's it. Get out of this situation. Leave. Mm. Don't be around it. So you have, I, you know, basically learn that I have to not be around that type of negativity and so forth. And that is how I'm working on now, hopefully that I could be able to get them closed. Then if I can't get them closed, 
then hopefully that I don't develop that heart disease then that only giving me a, as a two li year limit of life. And I'm hoping that, or to have a heart surgery and I don't mm. want to have a heart surgery either. So yeah. I'm looking, yeah, so basically. Hopefully yeah. you can reduce the stress, control the yes. stress and heal, you know, holistically like that. That would be the yes. best thing I think for you. That's exactly um, what I'm doing. Yeah. What do you hope readers take away from the book? What lesson, what moral, what, what uh, insight? I would love it for everyone to realize no matter what going on with them, that they can still have joy in their heart and that don't let whatever going on with them or whoever reading the book, because it may be a caregiver, a friend of a caregiver, or someone that lost someone and that's sad because the book, even though it's talking about illnesses and so forth, but there's also talks about um, uh, trials of people that is negative in your life, but mm -hmm. how you deal with it. And basically that's exactly what I'm doing. And so with that, I really wish, and I really hope that they could say, okay, if she can do this, I can do this. Because mm -hmm. I know one of my sister-in-laws read my book and she said, I didn't know that all this was going on with you. And she was in the bed. She said, I, I can't do this. I can't, I can't do it. I said, yes, you can. Right. So she lost her son that was taking care of her. Then she lost her husband. Then after that, mind you, she was able, she mustered up the strength. And now she's up and about doing things that she had them doing, that she could be taking herself to the doctor and taking herself, you know, and doing things for her because she had no one now mm -hmm. to be able to do those things. So she did. She found out that she did have that strength to do that. And so now she's much happier about that. Now, exactly. You're basically, you know, showing the way that here's the hand I've been dealt. This is right. what I've done. This is how I survived. And uh, if I can do it, you can do it too. Yeah, even though it's harder for some people and mm -hmm. some of them may say, I can't do it, I don't want to do it. And I'm not, because <laughs> it was so ironic. Uh, one person I gave a copy of my book to, and mm -hmm. then I saw again, I asked her, did she read it? She was like, I started reading. She said, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. She said, you went too, too, through too much. It was just too deep for me. Yeah. I can't handle it. I'm like, okay, it's okay. It's all right, but you know, but it just matter on the person, yeah. you know, how much strength they feel like they have in themselves. Because I want people to realize that they can have just as much strength and courage and joy and all the wonderful things that I have or what I am accepting that I am doing for myself. And that is the point with that and and letting your family, your friends know that it's okay. Mm. It's okay because they are going through a lot because a lot of times they don't know what to say to you. Yeah. They don't know how to react to you. So really make it easier. And that's what I do. I make it easier on people uh, to accept me for what I am and how I am and what I'm doing and how I'm doing. And that is my main thing. Well, you've done great work here, Janice, by writing this book. It's going to be of service to a lot of people. Many people have challenges out there, emotional, physical, and so forth. Everybody's going through something. So here's your guide on basically how to be a survivor. The name of the book is I Am a Survivor. It's an inspiring memoir by Janice Holloman. She narrates her journey of faith, hope, and endurance through the numer numerous health challenge she has faced from Crohn's disease to heart disease and beyond. And we wish her well, we'll keep her in our prayers and uh, you can learn more about her inspiring story by purchasing her book. Again, the links are below this interview. Janice, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. I thanks for so spending happy. the time with us, I appreciate it. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time, this time until next time on Spotlight.